This video is concerned with information systems. Organizations require information to determine appropriate decision making. It's important for organizations to have access to good information in order to facilitate good decision making. Uh, bad information, if there is such a thing, because if it's bad information it's not really information at all. But bad information, if I may use the term, can be destructive to a company. It can lead to bad decision making and ultimately uh, damage the commercial success of the business. So it's imperative that businesses have access to good information and information that's appropriate to their requirements. Organizations rely on information systems which allow for the processing and analyzing of information. So information systems must be in place which enable them to acquire the information and then process the information in a way that makes it useful for them. So it, it processes facts and figures and it processes observations and feedbacks and enables the organization to build strategies around the outcomes of that analysis. So information systems are very important. Information systems can range from software, hardware, uh, data, people, procedures, um, they all add to information that the, the business can tap into and the information is flowing all the time within the organization from contact with its customers, contact with suppliers, with its own internal processes, production or processing information or whatever it does and all the time there's information building up and it's important that the, the business is able to uh, tap into this information, to, to use the information and to understand the information and to add it to their collective experiences so that it becomes useful in the future. Let's talk about information systems more fully. Information systems are a combination of hardware and software used for the collection, storing and processing and delivery of data. So information systems by and large are ways of collecting information and then processing it. Now this may be uh, make it, taking some information electronically and processing it using software, uh, software on computers. Or it may be just making observations and recording the observations and then analyzing the observations in some particular way, perhaps uh, in terms of a focus group. Getting colleagues to sit down and discuss what was observed and discuss what was happening and try to understand it and record it that way. But an information system means that there is an approach to collecting the information, to storing the information and to analyzing it and making sense of it and making sure that it uh, adds to the knowledge base of the business. So information systems are vital for an organization. It allows the organization to effectively communicate with its customers, suppliers and competitors. The information system makes sense of the commercial context the business has with its customers and with its suppliers. It makes sense of it. It understands uh, seasonality in terms of demand or uh, of its own production requirements. It understands uh, the, the need uh, for placing orders in, in a certain way because of logistical concerns or it understands the the outlets for its product and the requirements of the outlets. It's processing a lot of information. But this 
in turn enables it to understand its customers and its suppliers and to effectively communicate with them and to understand their concerns also. For example, organizations will use information systems to attract and retain customers with the use of the internet and processes to manage accounts and human resources. So organizations will use communication systems to process information but also to ensure good contacts, good communications channels with customers and ensure that there is consistency in the messages it's sending out and it's doing appropriate analysis for the information that it's taking in. So an information system is vital for the success of the business. And there are many components to an information system. Uh, many, many parts that may be considered to be part of the information system. Um, for example, we could have knowledge of work systems, uh, management information systems, decision support systems, transactional processing systems, executive information systems and expert systems. And I suspect there are others which could be added on to that diagram. What I'm going to do in the rest of this session is to go through, briefly to go through these and discuss uh, what's meant by each of them. And I'm going to start by, I'll just put the cursor on the screen, I'm going to start here with the, the bottom one, the transactional um, processing system. So the transactional processing system, uh, this is required at the operational level. It's highly structured um, and it's structured in, in a sense that the decisions have been determined from past experience and past processing of uh, work, of uh, the processes of in, in terms of work and, and what has been done, that past experience has been uh, taken in to the knowledge base of the business so that now that there is um, a transactional processing system the, the transactions can be processed and there is some objective measure of what is good performance and what is not so good performance because there is past experience with which comparisons can be drawn. But it's a highly structured uh, decision process. Transactional processing systems are quite highly structured. It co collects information on, a, on the daily activities of the business and it's normally concerned with routine tasks that must be recorded. For example, sales orders, purchase orders, payroll, stock records. So it deals with uh, some of the bigger areas sales orders, purchase orders, payroll, stock stock records and so on. It deals with these and it has a, a methodology of dealing with them appropriately, appropriately in the context of what was good practice from the past. It has learnt from its mistakes in the past and it is constantly monitoring its own processes to ensure that there is good practice going into the future and it looks at the transactions of the business and ensures that the the main transactions of the business in terms of what we've just discussed here sales orders purchase orders and so on that these are accurately recorded and dealt with so the transaction processing system is responsible for for providing raw data which is then useful for making management decisions the, the raw data coming out of the, the process, looking at sales orders, looking at the time of year in which sales or orders increase or decrease and look at purchase orders and looking at stock levels and looking at this is fed back to management for management to make decisions. Uh, is the business doing things correctly or is, it, uh, is the business being driven by uh, history? by what happened in the past. Should 
it be modified in view of current practice. So the transactional processing system provides information for management to update its own decision making processes. The main aim of the transactional processing system is to record and store day-to-day -day activities of the organization. Using systems helps the organization add value to their products and services. So it records the day-to-day -day activities of the business and feeds that record of activities back to management who can then make decisions about how to improve uh, efficiency within the business, how to change the processes, how to tweak what's happening to lead to greater efficiency and, and to make decisions, make management decisions about the day-to-day -day running of the business. The transactional processing system produces accurate information which is error-free and reliable. Generally speaking, it takes what actually happens. So it's error-free. Providing it's recorded accurately, it's error-free. Uh, the sales book will tell what sales took place. Uh, the order book will tell what orders were placed. The stock levels will reflect what's in stock. And hopefully that is error-free. And this information can then be used to produce reports and the reports can be used for decision making, for good decision making within the business. Labour efficiency is increased as the transaction processing system replaces time consuming administration tasks. Once the business is running and once it's got uh, a routine established, depending on the nature of the product it makes or the service it provides, but once a routine has been established then administration is reduced. People know what's what's required of them. The workers know what's required. The managers, the line managers know what's required. So the the processes uh, are automatically established and there is less need for administration. Now the next type of information system we'll look at is the knowledge work systems, knowledge work systems. And in terms of our original diagram, if I just pop the cursor on, knowledge work systems are up here, which is another type of information system that feeds into the information systems. Knowledge work system is concerned with creating new knowledge and preserving that knowledge or information within the organization. So knowledge work system is, is it's concerned with creating new knowledge. It's looking critically at the processes. It's looking at how the business runs, what it does, and tries to find innovative, uh, new, cost-saving, more productive ways of performing the tasks. So it's a constant drive to improve uh, the business by creating new knowledge and preserving that knowledge, keeping that knowledge so that it can be used in the future. Knowledge work systems require specialist computer applications, generally speaking, to help knowledge workers, knowledge workers, workers pr uh, whose primary function is to obtain, process and disseminate information. These are knowledge workers. and to prioritize and organize the information. So knowledge work systems by and large can be expensive. They may require specialist computer applications, uh, specialist software, and they need specialist workers to use the software to collect the data, input the data. So knowledge work systems tends to be for the larger companies tends to be for the more, uh, the wealthier, the stronger and the bigger companies who are working on perhaps very complex work patterns and who 
need computer applications to model the work patterns and to make sense of it. And they have knowledge workers, workers whose function it is to use the software to process the, so the information that's coming back, the practical information that's flowing back, inputting it, processing it through the application, the computer application, to, to make sense of it and to organize the information for management. Tasks can be effectively organized and completed uh, with efficiency. Information can be easily shared between departments, managers, employees. Uh, networks, computer networks, are well established and in many companies, mostly the larger companies, but uh, medium-sized companies, uh, even smaller companies nowadays, will have some sort of computer networking system so that information is easily passed around between the managers. The managers can review the current state of thinking regarding cost, efficiencies, productivity. Uh, look, at, look at the organization in, in more detail. Not just look at their own department, but look at, take a more holistic view of the organization and are able to perhaps make recommendations and suggestions which will feed into the management decision process and help refine the decision making process. So what we've got is, we've got external knowledge, external knowledge coming from outside the business, uh, the perhaps the product of detailed pest analysis, political, economic, social and technological analysis of what's happening outside, but also external knowledge in the sense that it may be peripheral within the business, um, particular departments who perhaps are not mainstream, but have, will have a, an input into the decision-making process. And then we've got hardware at the very bottom, which are knowledge works systems, uh, knowledge workstations, uh, systems including engineering workstations, manager, uh, managers' uh, networks within their departments, which are linked in graphics workstations. Depends on the nature of the business, depends on the complexity of the business. But both the external base and the hardware will feed into the software. And the software can be extremely sophisticated. Uh, office, of, of, um, office automation systems, I should say. Uh, groupware, intranets, extranets, computer-aided design, CAD, CAD virtual reality, expert systems. So depending on the nature of the business, there can be very sophisticated knowledge work systems in place which will help management make decisions and help to understand the business. And clearly with bigger organizations it's important to be able to uh, extract information quickly and to understand what is the the knowledge base of the business so that decisions, future decisions, can be made more effectively. Now the next one we're going to look at is the Management Information Systems, MIS, Management Information Systems. Uh, management Information Systems, put the cursor on the screen, is this one over here, which again feeds into the Information Systems, Management Information System which feeds in here. The MIS, the Management Information System, uh, is computer-aided systems that support management activities. MIS are designed to collect and convert data into information from internal and external sources. So there is a flow of data coming in from the outside regarding customer requirements, uh, surveys of customer attitudes, uh, customer experiences, feedback from customers, and also information coming in from the external sources regarding suppliers and what suppliers think and what suppliers want and the suppliers plans for, for the future. So there's a lot of information flowing into the organization which needs to be 
analyzed. It needs to be converted into data. And it's converted into data through analysis. So it's using the management information systems. So the aim of MIS is to organize and communicate information to management at all levels. This information allows managers to construct tasks effectively and efficiently. So the MIS is to organize and communicate information to management at all levels. It, it analyzes data, it makes sense of data, and when when the, the data has been analyzed and it's in a format that's easily understood and it's accurate, it's passed on to management who can then make decisions and who can then understand what's happening within the business. Generally speaking, it consists of computer systems that entail the following components hardware, software, data, procedures and people. So the MIS, Management Information System, is generally speaking computer-based systems. It takes the data coming in, the data from customers, customer surveys, supplier information, uh, <coughs> government announcements, whatever it is, it's taking data. It feeds it into the system, the perhaps the computer system, and it does some analysis, and then it it passes that information on to the managers. Organizations use a variety of information systems to improve efficiency and decision making. Um, it doesn't have to be computer based, it could be um, management use focus groups, they could use um, surveys and presentations, they can use a variety of techniques. and the whole idea is to try and improve efficiency and improve decision making. So MIS, Management Infor Information Systems, include Decision Support Systems, DSS, Decision Support Systems, Expert Systems, and Executive Information Systems. So these are uh, part of the Management Information System. Now on our diagram, the one we're using, we haven't demarcated them as subsets of MIS. We've put them in um, in terms of mainstream information systems. But they could be seen as a part of the management information system. The decision support system, uh, expert systems and executive information systems. Now the MIS are systems that support management in decisions involving sales, turnover, marketing, accounts, supplier information. I put in a comma, I should have put in a comma dot 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 because it includes HR, it includes uh, long-term planning, it includes outsourcing, it includes globalization, it includes many aspects. Uh, some coming from strategic management, some coming from more routine day-to-day uh, -day processes. But the management information system, in effect, looks at the whole system, takes the, the flow of data around the system, and that's coming in from the outside, and turns it into information which can be used by management for decision-making purposes. So. <coughs> It could be product information, and uh, detailed information about products or services offered. Uh, so the management information system may be concerned with the product, product information and how uh, precise the products that's produced match customer expectations and customer requirements. It could relate to sales, information about turnover, sales, payment records, and the management information system can provide uh, updated information to the management about the current situation. It could be marketing, looking at customer satisfaction or complaints, uh, records of market research such as questionnaires and focus groups. What's marketing, uh, what are they finding out and what are they reporting back and making it accessible 
to management, again for decision making purposes. Looking at suppliers, information regarding the list of suppliers and their costs. Accounting, um, <coughs> information concerning transactions, financial information and reports from previous years and estimates for the current year and looking at budgets and looking at overspend and underspend and uh, looking at the, the budgetary system. All part of the management information system. So it runs really on, on three levels. Operational, small scale operations such as recording daily transactions and updating files. Operational, just taking in the information and adding it to the system. Then we've got tactical, systems are required to convert detailed information. For example, uh, exception reporting, what, what happened and how can it be explained. Informal systems, interpretation of data required at the operational uh, level and external data analysis. So the tactical is looking at the data in much more detailed and it's it requires more detailed information because it's it's looking at exceptional reporting it's it's looking at what went wrong or what was unusual or what surprises were there in the activities of the business it's looking at the informal systems it's looking at the relationships with customers and with suppliers that's difficult to quantify it's looking at the interpretation of data um, and looking at how the data is required at the operational level and how the data can be further improved to send on to strategic, the strategic level to help in setting more macro uh, strategies for the organization. The strategic level information systems are informal in nature uh, for example, not possible to quantify some information. Uh, this is summary level information. Human judgment at this level is valued. So at the strategic level, all the information has come up. It's been summarized from the operational through the tactical up to the, the senior management at the strategic level. But they've got to make decisions about the direction of the business, which products to make which markets to enter and this is really entrepreneurship this is trying to look into the future it's trying to see what is the best way forward it's going to use the at the, at the strategic level it's going to use the information that's come up that's been processed but it's also reliant upon judgment on experience of the managers of what they feel is a good way forward. So it's uh, it's using the management information system but it's not entirely based on it. Let's look at the decision support systems, the DSS. Uh, decision support systems over here. And it's really a part of the management information system, as I said earlier, but I've just added it in here as a, a direct, because it is an information system, so it's, it comes off here. The decision support system, uh, or systems, uh, are information systems, computer applications, specifically designed to support management decision making. So these could be computer applications that are specifically written for the business to help the business in making uh, decisions and they are peculiar to that business they are written with that business entirely in mind they look at all of the idiosyncratic parts of the business and processes of the business and accommodate those into the program. So specialist software houses perhaps will have developed the software for the business. Of course this is a very expensive 
undertaking and it really depends on the size of the business and the possible returns in using such software. These information systems are highly effective in decisions that are risky and pose high levels of uncertainty. So when businesses are faced with very risky decisions to try to use everything at their disposal try to look at the problem from all angles and using decision support systems uh, is is valuable but as I said it's costly uh, specialist software is expensive so it depends on the returns it depends on whether it's worth buying that software and engaging in this type of uh, decision making process DSS is a skillfully designed software unique to each organization. These systems allow strategic management to make decisions based on the organization's current trends. So it looks at the organization's current trends and tries to extrapolate those trends to see what's, what's likely to happen into the future and based on that it can make some sort of decision. But as I said the software is expensive. It brings together, DSS, the Decision Support System, brings together a variety of information such as weekly transactions and sales figures. They will be part of the system. Trends and forecasts of projected future revenue, perhaps using regression analysis or using some sort of statistical analysis to try and estimate what's likely to happen in the immediate future, perhaps in the, in the intermediate future, perhaps in a, a year, two years time, and in the long term, perhaps five years. Obviously the further you go into the future the more risky it becomes. But um, but it may use trends to, to try and help make decisions. It may also look at the likely costs if things go wrong. and look at past decisions and look at past trends and how the trends moved and how they changed what caused the trends to change. The aim of the decision support system is to ensure that appropriate data and information is readily available for the purpose of the decision. So it's trying to help the organization make a decision. Now let's look at executive information systems. Um, it's over here. Executive information systems, this one here, which again feeds into the information systems of the business. So executive information systems. Uh, this is a decision support system. So the EIS is a DSS. Uh, an executive support system is part of the decision support system. Uh, this system is specifically designed for top level management and executives. This is moving towards the strategic end of decision making. The executive support system is an infrastructure that gathers and converts internal and external information for use by executives to make informed decisions and information concerning organizational goals so it it picks up the information from the business and tries to make decisions based on the information that's coming up through the business executive uh, information system packages enables management to access information such as financial information work in progress or in process um, stock levels inventory market share trends and suggest, uh, suggestions for improvements. So it, it feeds up into the executive level a lot of the uh, current state of the business in terms of its activities. Uh, what are its current stock levels and what's its inventory, what's, what's its market share and what products is it making and, and so on. So it, it's feeding up to the executives a lot of information which will help them to 
make more informed decisions. So EIS contains the following features. It captures summary level data which reflects on other systems used by the organization. So it, it taps into other systems and takes the output of the other systems perhaps or, or some of the raw material or the raw data of the other systems and processes it. Takes it in and summarizes it for the executives to try and make decisions. It gives them the important information about production, orders, sales, marketing information, suppliers, customers, whatever. It, it feeds all of that information in and makes sense of it and enables the executives to make informed decisions. The drilling down and summarizing of information to provide detail, uh, detail to support management decisions. So drilling down means to investigate more deeply data. So when, when the information is passed up to the executive information systems, they can spot anomalies or can spot problems perhaps, or question why is it that inventory has increased when sales are going down. Um, so the management are able to spot issues in terms of taking a more holistic picture of the organization, taking a, a fuller picker, picture of the organization, that they're able to spot uh, anomalies, spot perhaps issues or problems, and able to drill down and find out why this is happening try to find solutions to why it's happening. It, generally speaking, can provide graphical information and trend analysis uh, features. So this helps in decision making. Graphical analysis is, is good. Uh, looking at the picture, instead of getting caught up in uh, a lot of numbers and tables and and facts and formulas looking at the the picture and looking at simply what's happening in terms of inventory sales likely orders in the future uh, looking at it in graphical terms may be more useful for executives because it gives them a quicker picture of of what's happening by and large, the system is user friendly. By and large, the information is able to be produced quite quickly. It's highly summarized information, but it's possible to get the more detailed information if required. The drilling down exercise I talked about in number two. But by and large, it just simply presents graphical information, straightforward information, which will help the executives to make the, the wider and bigger decisions. Now the next one is expert systems and if we go back to our uh, earlier little diagram we have experts, yeah here, expert systems it's up here which feeds into information systems so we'll have a look at expert systems very briefly Expert systems are applications that emulate decision-making capabilities of humans or a, a knowledge worker who holds specific skills and expertise within an organization. So an expert system, it, it, it works out what experts would do under certain situations. And the information of the experts has been fed into the computer and modeled by the computer. So the computer holds the decision-making process of the experts and the computer is able to analyze the data as if it were experts, if it was a panel of experts making the decision. Now of course that sounds like computers have taken over from people. Um, well, expert systems, in a sense, is moving in that direction, but it's still 
perhaps early days, but it's also seen as, as one tool and ultimately the decision will be taken by people. Ultimately humans will take the decision and not the computers. At least that seems to be the current thinking. It's sometimes referred to as artificial intelligence as these systems can reason. Well, perhaps reason is a strong word. They can diagnose problems and offer remedies. Um, computers don't reason like human beings. They follow algorithms. They follow computer uh, routines. They are pre-programmed. They can vary situations according to random numbers within limits which could be pre-programmed. And they can find possible scenarios and what's the likely outcome under different situations which will save people trying to work out what could happen, the what if questions, what could happen in different situations. But they are still quite limited in the way they can make decisions. So it still falls to humans to make entrepreneurial decisions. It still falls to humans to make uh, executive decisions. But artificial intelligence can alert decision makers to different possibilities, perhaps ones that could have been overlooked. And by running artificial intelligent routines, uh, decision makers are more aware of what's required under different situations. Generally speaking, expert systems contain sets of rules, experiences, individual knowledge and scenarios for alternative decisions. Um, in order, or in other words, I suppose, consulting services. Um, they, they, they can update themselves. They input the more data they hold, the better the decisions uh, that tend to emerge. But the way they make decisions will have to be programmed. They will have to be instructed about how to make the decisions. And the data entering could be within ranges rather than as a, a fixed figure. So different outcomes can arise. Uh, the real use of expert systems seems to be as an aid for executives in making decisions. The expert systems suggest that the following could happen and this may refine the decision making of the executives. It may influence it or it may simply make the executives more aware of possible outcomes, as I said earlier, possible outcomes that they could have overlooked. Uh, there's a, a little diagram from Steve Copley. Uh, here's the expert standing on the right. Uh, the expert feeds in to a knowledge base held on the computer, uh, talking about uh, how to, to do certain things. And that knowledge has been programmed, has been extracted from the person and put into the system. Um, there is some sort of analysis that is undertaken within the system, the inference engine it's called just looking at how the computer processes the knowledge base. Then there is a, a, a human interface, the expert, the non-expert user sits down and interrogates the program and asks various questions and gets various answers depending on how the, the program is computed, uh, sorry, how the computer is programmed I should say, and what knowledge has gone in. So the, the non-expert user queries it and takes the advice then to uh, perhaps the executives, the top management at the strategic level, who will perhaps take this into account in looking at their own processes and their own decision-making process. Now finally, let's look at the uh, expert systems and how they're used within organizations. Well, they provide knowledge and guidance on a matter of law instead of consulting a solicitor. So uh, 
expert systems could be used in very uh, rigid decision making systems. Uh, for example, within the legal system, um, if someone breaks a contract, then what are the rules for breaking the contract? These may be programmed in, together with the important cases that need to be considered. Um, and then the facts of the case could be typed in and the likely decision will emerge. Well, that's because the, there is consistency, or there should be consistency in the legal system. And if the facts of a particular case fit a case that was issued by a higher court earlier, then the, the law of precedent will take place and the, the ruling of the higher court will apply to the to this particular case and so it could be captured with them on a computer. Possible. Uh, financial advice based on past and present information could be fed into a system. Looking at the wide range of financial instruments that are available and the returns on them and the, the risk factor associated with each of them could be all programmed in and some advice be given based on experts and what experts say is the the balance between risk and return. Uh, the banking industry could use expert systems to judge credibility or credit worthiness of applicants. Look at the applicant's income, look at their um, contractual outgoings, their lifestyle, their their bills and so on and try to decide if they can reasonably give a loan to that person. Perhaps, perhaps the person cannot service the loan, they don't have enough resources left over at the end of the month. So expert systems are creeping in to different industries and in different ways. These are some of our um, topics on information systems used in business. Information systems are extremely important and there are different types as we've seen aimed at different parts of the organization and with different attributes. Uh, that's where I got the, the little cartoon earlier on expert systems. Um, and that's all I'm going to do on this topic. So we're going to leave it at that and say thank you for watching.